everyone and welcome to the woman's cave and yeah i almost say the ladies tale podcast because this these people that i'm about to interview it feels very glamorous so i almost say the ladies <laughs> tale podcast but then i was like wait they haven't done a movie yet <laughs> that's <laughs> what it is <laughs> but anyway welcome to the woman's cave i said that twice wow it has been a long time since i have recorded a show so uh bear with me because um, as you can tell, I am lipstickless and under eye concealer. I don't have any of that. I'm rocking my whole, like I'm an old person face today. No, you and look I, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> but you didn't come to hear about any of this stuff right now. I want, I'm, one of, I'm Wilona and I'm one of the And I Thought ladies. So let me see, that means we wrote books. Yeah, we wrote literary life guides with pop poetry. They are, and I thought divorce was bad and I thought being grown up was easy. If only I were me a memoir in first. Widow's Deb, Widow's Deb, wow. Widow's Debt, Widow's Web and Foreign Coffee. If you're counting along at home, that is six books. And you guys know what time this is because there's no Jade with me today. It's sign language time. So six books, and then we add 11 books and that equals 17 books. And that means that you can see all the books that we have written at www. Yeah, you recognize that sign language stopped immediately as soon as I started doing the, uh, the website. Oh my, my lunch just told on me. You can find that at www.andithoughtladies.com. And you know, I should do it one more time, like I'm a car salesman, but as from the under eye concealer that you that is not here, you can see I'm tired. So I'm going to keep on going because you're not here to hear about me. You're here to hear about our wonderful guests. Wonderful guests. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, thanks, Wilnona, for having us. I'm Jerry Solomon. I'm one half of the Real Deal Wedding Insiders. I am a floral designer in the Boston area and uh, also a yoga teacher. And I love cats. And I'm going to toss it over to my co-author. My name's Edna Dredge Parker, and my uh, wedding planning business is EFD Creative Event Planning and Design. And Together with Jerry, we wrote the Guide to Smart Wedding Planner. We're the Real Deal Wedding Insiders. And I am an artist. I went to art school many years ago, and I've been a creative soul ever since. I've done things from designing and manufacturing women's swimwear way long time ago. We won't talk about how long ago that was, to um, you know, uh, designing and branding and just creating and entrepreneurialism. I love it. I love connecting with other entrepreneurs. Women, particularly, is a lot of fun. You know, when we collaborate together and come up with ideas, I also love cats. And um, that's just a little bit about me and, and, and what I'm up to these days. So, <laughs> it was, like, was it seven? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> you gave me a lot to ask about. But first, since I'm a narcissist, I got to bring it back to me. Okay. So I did own a wedding planning business a while ago. So I find this very interesting. Nice. Oh, good. Yeah. And, and I was thinking the book could be, and you thought wedding planning was easy. Like when oh you were doing all those places, because it's, yeah. Mm. Who the, okay, let's discuss this first of all. Why are there so many women out there that are like, you know what I want to do for my dream job? Wedding. <laughs> Why? I mean, is, what do they think happens? I think it's I mean, a glamorous. How many times have you talked to people about this? I'm sorry. It, I think it's, people think it's glamorous, and it and the end result is often glamorous. But like most glamorous things, there's a lot of not so glamorous down and dirty. There. Down and dirty. Yeah, like being a movie star. Like there's, I I don't know personally, but there's a lot that's not glamorous, and you know. People say to me all the time about being a floral designer. Oh, it must be so fun to play with flowers all day. Yes, I play all day long. I also lift very heavy buckets and, you know, come home filthy. <laughs> and um, I like to say that I pick leaves and stems off some of the most beautiful ballrooms in five-star hotels. Like, it's so glamorous. And then I take those stems to the stinky loading dock. Because it doesn't matter how many stars the hotel has, the loading dock with the dumpster is still stinky. And it <laughs> but the wedding's gorgeous. And it depends too, like why you get into it, right? Into wedding planning. Like I got into wedding planning because I'm a designer and I wanted to really be a part of event design and I wanted to pull it all together. So being part of event design 
to me is my passion. So that's what makes it exciting. And, and when you see the outcome at the end, when you do this whole creative process and then you, process, and then you see this amazing room and it's all done, you're like, oh, that's lovely. And you can't wait to hit the pillow at night. <laughs> Okay, so that's the thing. I think like everyone should know that the moment you finish an event, there is nothing like sleep. And I mean, like, it feels like days, like you need three days. Just oh, my body hurts days. head to toe. <laughs> and like a gallon of water because it's oh, so yeah. dehydrating. Yup, you just need to wake up to drink water and go to the restroom and yep. possibly eat because you forgot to eat the entire time you're planning those last couple of days when you plan the event. Yep. What's food? <laughs> So we call that the wedding hangover because truly you'll, you'll sometimes wake up the next day and your mouth is dry and your body is aching and you have a headache. And it's not because you drank all night and partied. It's because you didn't eat. You were on your feet, you, um, you know, for probably 10 or 12 hours and you did not drink enough, even though you drank five gallons of water, you still did not drink enough. I'm drinking a ton of diet Coke at these things to keep my energy going. So I come home, I'm wound up, I can't go to sleep. By the time I go to sleep, the next day comes, you know, my whole sleep is disturbed. I was oh. gonna say that. So for us, it's not Diet Coke. It's, we, we take vitamins for, and it, like we have these vitamins that really do a great job. Oh, like, nice. um, yeah, yeah. So, um, so then you got out of it. You're not a wedding planner anymore. Oh God, thank you. Yeah, no, you know, what's really funny is, um. Oh God, I'm talking about me again. But um, what is really funny is, no, I don't do wedding planning anymore, but I am just recuperating. I'm like, this week is the first week I feel like a human being from throwing awards. Uh, we yeah, it's an event. Awards, book festivals, conferences. It's a lot of work. Writers retreats. And the awards was six events in two days in a city I knew nothing about. I didn't know where the venues were. I didn't know what they were going to look like. I didn't know the driving distance, traffic patterns, nothing. I didn't know the people that I was going to be like, you just don't have the relationships to do everything. Right, right. And then like the person that was in charge just walked off one day, like three weeks before the event and was like, oh, well, if you want it, you can just do it yourself. And so we started over from scratch Wow. with three weeks and did six wow. events, one wow. of them being a mixer for the media. And we live three states away. Wow. From a city we knew nothing about. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people, they, I think the biggest misconception about a wedding is that, oh, it's just like throwing a party in my backyard or party in my, and I think what people don't understand and what we hope we can help people with is that it's a production. So whether it's a Broadway show or a movie or, or the events that you were just talking about or a wedding, these are all things that require so much planning. And then with the added with the added um, pressure of this is kind of hopefully a one-time event, you know, with, with the event you did last week, if it was, if it wasn't perfect, you'll probably do another one and you can make it better, you know, but with weddings, it's like, if it's not perfect, that stinks for the couple. Right. So not how do you take a that lot of on? Pressure. A lot of pressure and it's a steep learning curve. And then it's like, how do you take that on without having some expert help along the way? So I love this because you segued for us and got us back on track because the train had completely left the station. <laughs> it was going well. I was having fun. Oh. Yeah, it was true. <laughs> we, we like segues, but yes, we're here now. Okay. <laughs> so you have written a book to give us a bit of that expert help. Uh, what gave you the idea question one and then compound question because I'm alone and I always do this so question number two is how did you break down wedding planning in a way that it's comprehensible that's an awesome question that really is Jerry, I'll I'll take, first. <laughs> oh, I was gonna let you do the do the how did we come well, up with the idea why don't you tell that story and then I'll do the how we break it down okay so um you know Jerry and I are good friends she's a florist I'm a planner we work together a lot we're part of the same community we know a lot of people we both belong to networking groups and we share a lot of stories and we, we you know we commiserate like anybody else in their in their own industries and we were like 
people just need information. Like even when I work with people as a planner and I'm giving them all the information, I still feel like they could still use this book, you know, because, you know, there's just like, there's, a, you know, give it to your mother, give it to your father, give it to your fiance, you know, like, the more people that know information, the better it's going to go. So as we got talking, we said, we should just really write a book. And then we don't remember who said that, but the other person said, yeah, we should write a book. And we stopped and we're like, okay, we're writing a book. <laughs> and um, a few years go by and it's done. But, you know, I think, I think, you know, we just felt there was this, there's so much information out there that it's everywhere, but not all that information is necessarily good information it can be confusing and if it's not delivered in the right way it can really set you in the wrong direction so we just really started to think about how weddings work and all the different pieces of the wedding process and breaking it down and giving our best information about each piece go ahead Jared. right so then the pieces we really we realize that there are so many different ways people do weddings and there are so many different ways um like amounts that people spend and how they think about it and all the things. But when it comes down to it is that a wedding is when two people come together to profess their love and there's family and celebration. Like that's the basics. So how do you get to that? And how do how does couple A versus couple B break it down to decide what's best for them? And so we have seven chapters in our book and each one kind of talks about what they might need to do on a and they could it could be on a very large scale and it could be on a very small scale and we talk about some things that maybe other places don't talk about um we don't get a whole lot into like what flowers are in season in july in you know kentucky we don't do that you could google that probably we talk more about okay um who's paying for this and if they're paying, what kind of say do they have? And how do you work with them? And how do you deal with someone if maybe they're a little difficult? And what maybe you and your partner should talk to together? So, and then we talk about like, what's what's your vision? Because that's a buzzword. And people, we realize people kind of get a little, a little nervous. Like, I don't have a vision. I don't even think I know what a vision is. So, so let's, Sorry. let's go let's, ahead. You can say something. <laughs> let's break it down. Let's, let's, let's talk the, like, let's give you some context so that you can decide what your vision is, or if you even want to have one, you know, and then it's like, you are probably going to hire a bunch of vendors. How might you do that? And how do you figure out what it's going to cost? And like the questions to ask to kind of design that. And then finally, like you've spent so much time. Oh, and how to pick a venue. That's another big one. Um, and and then it's like you spend so much time, energy, money to get to this big day, the dream day or whatever it is. How do you enjoy that day? Because we have so many people that will say to us, oh my gosh, it was a blur. I hardly remember it. Well, that's really sad. You've spent months and hours and dollars. You want to be able to remember it. So that's that's what we did. Um, and we hopefully broke it down in a very kind of quick, easy, like we want people to read this and be like, okay, I can do this. I got this. And, and the fun part was after we did that, we realized, you know, there's always more to say and there's mm -hmm. always more to expand on. So we, you know, we do have a companion workbook coming out in 2023. I was going to ask. I was oh, like, yeah. There's the workbook. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's, it's coming. Up, like it's around, it's around the corner. And you know, and and there's a lot of other things that we, you know, we are the real deal wedding insiders, and we are going to continually build this brand and try to do our best to get all the best information out to people that we can because you know, in a world where everything is there, it's really not there. You know, sometimes I mean this is off the subject, but like uh, medically. You know, I found something wrong with my cat. My cat's fine, but I'm I'm Googling it and I come up with like a million things that make no sense. I go to the vet. It's like nothing that was even on Google. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you can't you can't just think that all your answers are on Google. You know, you have to you people have to find the experts, whether it's your vet or it's your planner or whoever it is. You know, experts are the people in whatever field have that information. Yep. 
we always say it's a, it's one thing to read it. It's a whole nother thing to talk to someone who knows who's done it like a thousand and one times. They know yeah. things that you would have never thought of. Oh, I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We always say you don't know what you don't know. So we're yeah. here to give you some of the things that you didn't know you didn't know. <laughs> so now this sounds like this is a very niche market that you guys would be selling to but I really as someone who throws events or through events um, I know that a wedding planning book is not just for a niche market so can you tell us who else might be interested in reading this that's not getting yeah. married let me let me get that because I actually have a cousin who's planning a party for her son and you know I keep and I'm helping her and I'm talking to her and I keep saying, you know, you gotta look in the, the book. I go, it's a wedding planning book, but just go to chapter so-and-so and she'll always joke with me like, so she'll ask me something and she goes, okay, so that's page 150, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like the, all the answers are in your book. And it's, it, it does, you know, it is true. Things really, um, you can call it a wedding and you know you do you know you it is a niche book in the t in terms of it being wedding planning yes that's true and it it is heavy wedding planning book but at the same time like the wedding industry is a billion dollar industry and you may not be planning a wedding but you may know someone who's getting married who just got engaged it makes it makes a great gift for people it you know you don't the end user doesn't have to necessarily be the bride or the groom or the groom the groom the bride and the bride it can it can be a girl or, or a guy in the bridal party. It can be the mother, the father of the groom or the bride. And and it just, it's, you know, I have people who are like, I want to buy this for someone else. Can I please throw in here also King Sierra's? Yeah. I've done King Sierra's. And <laughs> yeah, I've, we oh did a God, great I one did, together. We did one together. It was amazing. It's on my website and you check it out when you go to my website. It's the King Sierra. It was out of this world. It was, it was a lot. I, it was it like was a wedding. In a good way. Yeah. yeah, in a great way. Yeah, in a great way. Yeah. Love their dresses. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. I'm always like, ooh, buying a new one. But I have this like, I'm definitely older than 15, but like the dresses are amazing. <laughs> Listen, I never had like a sweet 16 party or any of that. I'm too old for that. They never had that back then. I would love to go back and have myself a teenage big party. <laughs> oh no, my, um, Oh, see, and I'm about to be a narcissist again, but my, uh, my graduation party, I had six seamstresses. Wow. 500 and some people. And I cooked, planned, did everything for it. But I started doing, like, I've, I've been doing party planning since I was seven. Yeah, like, that sounds like a lot of fun. But yeah. like, yeah. so I was like, for my graduation party, we're doing this big. I'm not having sweet nothing, no kids. <laughs> My graduation party is going to be huge. Got it. I even designed my own dress and had it done. That sounds like a lot of fun. That's amazing. It was. We didn't I'm have glad. something like that back in my day. I feel so archaic right now. But anyways. <laughs> it was a graduation party. Yeah, From high school. Party, but, but, but in my day, people just like showed up and, you know, I won't say what went on back then, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um. I was going to talk about a niche market. And then right after that, I wanted to know if you guys had thought about expanding this because I'm not going to lie to you. Oh no. Before I talk about expanding this, because my brain has already gone and created an entire television show for you. I'm working on the pitch deck right now. Like I'm just pulling Fantastic. together ideas and yeah. Um, but anyway, we're going to go back to, before we jump into that, let's uh, talk about branding. How has your branding and, and uh, swimwear line creation helped you guys with in this book journey? I definitely can speak to that because I, I do have another business where I, I help build and brand event planning businesses. That's, that's one of my um, successful businesses I'm really proud of. And so basically... You know, branding is is me. And back in the day when I graduated from college, we used to call it corporate identity systems. That's how long ago we didn't even the word branding. I can't hear you, but okay. 
<laughs> so corporate identity systems is what I worked on back in the day. And then eventually the, the word branding was adopted. I did trademark the name, the wedding brander. And I also trademarked the name, the wedding business brander. So I, I am, I am the brander and it's been really, really instrumental in what has allowed us to really take off. I mean, we've been extremely lucky with the launch of this book, but part of it's luck and part of it is we know how to strategize and we know how to build this brand and we know how to execute this brand, you know, right down to the cover design and the whole design inside the book is part of the, is part of the brand, you know, um, the look, the feel, the experience, what we, what we want people to experience from our brand. And, you know, we are experts and we have the knowledge, we have the energy, we have the passion. Those things are equally as important as the knowledge because knowledge is good, but you know, it's, it's something that's really in your fiber. And I, I get from you, you have passion. So I know that you get that, you know, it's something you're passionate about. I mean, you, you know, you exude it. And I, and so I know you get it. And I think that the whole thing is branding um, is really about messaging. And our message is, you know, we, we, we are the experts in the know and we have information and we are going to grow that. We have a lot of things that we're thinking about developing and we want to continue to um, to work on that. We don't have a lot, you know, we're still we're still developing it. So more to come, more to come on that. So next question is, if someone were to try to do this by themselves, what would you tell them that they absolutely must know in floral design? Because I'm not going to lie, I always fail. My events always fail a little in floral design. Great florists. I have great florists. Floral design, what would you say? That's you, floral Jerry. For, yeah, it is. <laughs> floral design for events, I would say um, give your floral designer um, a, a color palette, a... I always say three pictures and three to six descriptive words and let them do their job and a budget. And, you know, and all of that can be a conversation, you know, but ultimately um, put some parameters and then let the floral designer do their job in that they're the expert. And if they're good at what they do, they will take your pieces of information use their um, artistic medium to create something that it reflects the client. Like that's my goal every time. And I, I think the main thing that you're saying, which is really important is like, if you're gonna hire a planner, if you're gonna hire a florist, if you're gonna hire these people, make sure that you can trust them because if you can trust them, you'll have a better experience. If you're trying to, you know, backseat drive the whole time, you know, it, everything will get blurry and it won't really, you know, you're hiring people because of their expertise. And, the, oh, sorry. No, go no, ahead. go ahead. I was gonna say, don't ask the florist how many roses are going in the arrangement. Like, <laughs> like that's a micromanaging thing. Like, oh, well, if I'm paying this much, well, how many, how many stems are going in that arrangement? I, I, I don't know yet. I don't know yet because because you're not going to be, at that but it'll be this big, you know, it'll be the right size for the table and it's going to be gorgeous and it's going to, and you're going to love it. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I would say with any of your creative artists at, in an event, you, you will get the most out of them if you trust them and let them, let them go with their creativity, you know, give them a little parameters you know obviously somebody that wants white and blush at their wedding would be upset with orange we're not going to do that um but other than that you know I've had people that have tried to micromanage me a little bit and I'm sitting there saying gosh they really talked to me about what the color what what pink meant to them and I don't know if this bunch of flowers is too purple and so like I get in my head about it and that never makes something creative where if it's like, ah, they trust me. I like the way this fits with all of this. They're going to love it. They probably will love it. And interestingly enough, I recently posted a couple of uh, TikTok videos about exactly that. So if you're on TikTok, check yeah. it out. So. so of course, now it's your turn. What, what do people need to know if they're going to DIY their wedding? 
What are the two things they absolutely must know? I'm coming back. I recognize you. Was it a DIY question? I said floors and like hiring one and DIY. But okay, I can come back to I'm some DIY things. Okay, good. Good. All right. Wait. So DIY. Mary, DIY yeah, yeah. in the wedding. What are the two things they must know? Which one of you are you asking? You. DIY. No, Edna. Edna. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just saw the smile and like, no, no. I'm like, she's the one that's smiling. Yeah, that's her. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, who are you asking me? I'm asking you. Okay. Sorry. I thought it was Jerry. So what are you asking me again? I'm, I'm so sorry. This part if will so, be edited. <laughs> if a couple is going to DIY their wedding, what are the two things they just absolutely must know? Well, that's a, that's a, a big question because it depends what the DIY is, right? Like if you are saying to yourself, I'm doing a wedding in my backyard and I'm going to DIY it, like, yeah. um, you know, you have to think about all the people, where are they going to use the facilities? You know, if it rains, is the ground going to get wet? Like, you know, it, 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 there are so many, like, like if it's going to be cold, heat, hot, AC, you know, like there's all these things a lot of people think, oh, let's have it in my backyard, like a barbecue. And it's like, no, it's not going to play like that. And, you know, and also too, like I, years ago, years and years ago, I had this client and she in her past life was a florist and she absolutely insisted on her and her friend doing the flowers for her own wedding. And I really, 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 really tried to talk them out of it. And it turned into a debacle and they were up till five in the morning, finishing their own flowers and trucking them through and it set everything back. So I just think, you know, you have to be careful when you do, when you do it yourself, you know? You have to be really careful and you have to think twice. Like, is it really worth you doing it? And then you lose a whole night's sleep or you, you know, you pay a professional. So it varies depending on, on every situation. I completely agree. Now, what do they need to know if they're going to hire a wedding planning? Just two things. To hire a wedding planner? Um, well, I think if you're going to hire a wedding planner, it's, it's really- I'm hire you. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> the first one is to hire you. Okay. And the second is, no, I'm joking. I mean, it, honestly, this goes back to what we were saying earlier. And, and I feel really strong about it. If you're going to hire a wedding planner, you, you have to trust them because problems arise when someone doesn't fully trust the vendor and they get in their head about it. And then what happens is, it, it, you know, the communication breaks down. When the communication breaks down, you know, it, it can get very difficult for everybody involved and it can be unnecessary, a lot of unnecessary things. So when you hire a planner, make sure it's someone who's well-connected, make sure it's someone who, I, I always tell people, look for people who belong to networking organizations in your city. You know, we have NACE, we have Aaliyah, we have the, uh, you know, Boston Wedding Group in Boston and, you know, people who are involved in groups, have more uh, connections and it just makes for, for a, a, um, a solid, a solid vendor, planner, vendor. Yeah. Now, Jerry, what if, if someone wants to do their own floral arrangements and stay up till five in the morning, the day before to, to do their floral arrangements for their wedding, which they know just two things. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And if they do give themselves plenty of time. Yeah. It's a bad you know what, idea. Because you can go wrong. And, and the one thing about professional is like, if something does go wrong, we have contacts. We know how to make the phone calls. If I, I literally once had a limousine that like broke down on the highway get, coming to a place. I had no control over that. It just broke down. But I have, I have my contacts. So I was able to like, you know, just reach out to people who I know, love and trust. And they're going to they're gonna do me a favor. And they're going to get their, their limo out there. You know, so that's why professionals are good because we have backup plans. I agree so much. Oh my goodness. It's so, again, not talking about me and these interesting experiences. So you guys, uh, can you guys go ahead and tell us where we can find out more info? I'm sorry, I keep saying you guys and can y'all go ahead and tell us where we can find more information about you and where we can buy this book. Absolutely. So the book is available where books are sold, including Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, and other independent sources online. Um, and you can find us at realdealweddinginsiders.com. That's our website. We're on Instagram, 
uh, we're on all the things, all the platforms and connections from our website to all those things, but um, that's probably the easiest way. And then uh, you can find me at Jerry Floral on Instagram, jerryfloraldesign.com. Edna? Um, and you can, on Instagram, you can find me at EFD underscore creative on Instagram. And I mean, if you just type in EFD creative on your Google, you'll find, you'll find me. So <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both Thank for you being so here. Thank you so much. We this really is super fun. Yeah. I'm sorry. I really what? You know, I love to hear about me. I really what? <laughs> really? <laughs> super fun. It. You are absolutely a doll. Love your energy. Very <laughs> cool. Thank you both for being here today. I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up since there is no Jade to wrap us up. You can find out everything your ladies are doing at www.andithoughtladies.com. And when you're there, go down to the middle of the page and you can see the charities that we proudly support. You can also support them as well. We look forward to you doing that and we thank you in advance. Remember that wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Wilnona and the Missing Jade.